Okay, this little screencast is going to walk you through some symbology tools using the um, tree traverse from assignment six. So we'll start by opening up a map in our map. I'll grow this a little bit more. How's that looking? Um, so here we are in our map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to add this. Um, Mine is a different folder than yours, but uh, markutrees.dxf. So if you double click, you end up seeing all the bits that are going to be uploaded with this DXF file. Um, but if you just select it once and click Add, and just click OK at this point. OK, so this is what you all saw when you brought it into ArcMap. Now, .dxf files are clunky files that are not the typical types of layers that you're going to work with in ArcGIS. More commonly are something called shapefiles, which we're going to work with today, or geodatabases and feature classes, which is what we're going to work with in the coming weeks. So if you hit the little plus sign, you'll see the annotated point polyline, polygon, multi-patch business here. And it's not very pretty. Like we'd like to be able to symbolize things and play around with things. Instead, you have these really small labels you can't even read. So what we want to do now is turn this .dxf into a shapefile, which is much more functional on our map. So remember, what we were at, our goal here was actually to map these trees over here. The traverse itself was just a means to mapping with radial shots these trees. So what we're interested in is the point features, not the line features, so polyline or point. So point, you're going to right click, and you're going to go to Data, Export Data. Here's where you're going to convert this into a shapefile. So navigate to your folder. Ignore the folder that I'm working with here because it's it's not it's going to be the same as what you're working with. So put it into your assignment folder, and I'm going to call it Marku Trees, and it's a shape file. So actually, let me go back there for a second. Notice how it's a shape file, and like I said earlier, there's things called feature classes, and we're going to work with those um, in the coming weeks. But for now, we'll work with shape files, which are very common. So um, export all features, um, this layer source data, and click OK. Do you want to export the data to the map as a layer? Yes, you do. There you go. So now if we unclick this, what you see is the, all the point data, which is stations and trees. I'm just going to keep that on for a second. Now, we're not interested in the, shape, in the station data. In fact, I just want to have the trees on the map. So now we're going to work with some of the symbology tools that we can use in our map. So right click on the shape file, go to properties. And under properties, there's all sorts of things you can do here. There's um, join and relates, which we may have done something like that with Rick, I'm not sure. There's labels. Um, there's something called source, which shows where this data is actually coming from. Um, it also points out that I don't have a coordinate system for this layer at this point. Um, and then symbology. So symbology, you can go to categories, and actually if we just hit symbology, we could, we could pick different symbols. In fact, I think there's a nifty little, um, if you search for tree, let's see. Oh my goodness, that was a bad move. Oh, okay, well these are 3D trees, which I think look sort of dorky, but maybe you like them. Uh, and, and then there's these, oh, I like this one. Okay, so if you search for tree, and you can add tree, and now everything's a tree. So that's a bit of a problem, because we only want our trees to be labeled. Now we're going to right click, and we're going to open what's called the attribute table. So this is all the data that came as part of this DXF, which is sort of annoying because there's things in here that aren't really relevant. But remember in the labels, and these are the comments now, you wrote down the tree numbers as part of that traverse. So remember this, the name of this column, which is comment, okay? So now we're gonna right click and we're gonna go back to symbology 
and we're going to go to what's called categories and under value field you're going to look for comment now you just notice how it doesn't and nothing shows up at this point you have to click add all values and then you get all the tree numbers okay now what's happening is it's labeling all the trees because they have a different type of label as a separate type of symbol so if you want to group the trees select the first one hit shift on your keyboard select the last one right click group values now you can double click on that symbol and you can this time i'll just make it a triangle for sake of ease okay and i can give a symbol to those trees and the label itself we could just call it tree Click OK, and let's see how that displays. Cool. So now let's turn off the traverse. But what you still can see are all my stations. Let's say I want to get rid of those stations. So right click, go back to properties and symbology, and notice how it says add all values and how there's this one right here. If you unclick the add all values, that would be sort of anything that doesn't fall into these two categories. But this one here, you could remove it. It still exists as part of your shapefile, but it will no longer be symbolized. Oh, except look at the black ones. It's still coming up. Okay, come back here. Properties. Unselect that one. Okay. Okay, so now you've just got your trees. Let's say you wanted to label them. Remember how there was tree one, two, three, four, five? So you're going to go back to properties, go to labels. Remember the field or the attribute column was comment and you're going to select label feature in this layer. You can change the size if you want, the font. You can also do something which is the placement. So how do you want to place, where do you want priority around the symbol? So change location. There's different options here and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So here I'm going to click OK. So now I've got labels on each one of my trees. But see how the labels are sort of funky, like label tree forest sort of sitting on tree two. The other ones aren't too bad. So what you can do, right click, properties, go back to labels, is with these placement properties, it assigns a priority. So right now the priority, the number one, is top right is our preferred location. And I think that's great, but maybe we could change that, change location. Let's see. Let's see what happens when we do that. If that might be better. I doubt it, but oh, look at that. It was a little bit better. Okay. So this is what I'm wanting you to do as part of assignment seven. You won't be dealing with trees, but you'll do be dealing with golf um, frisbee golf baskets. So I want you to symbolize them and then label them as well according to their number. So to recap, we started off with a DXF, we converted into a shapefile, which we'll get into what that means later, but they're much more friendly in ArcMap. Then we symbolized based on uh, a symbol to symbolize the trees and to ignore all the stations because the traverse itself was just a means to an end. The last step was labeling based on the attributes within the attribute.